But let's say you don't even have $400. You want solar, but you can't, you can't even afford $400. Are you out of luck? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my next video. Today, I want to talk to you about how much solar you should buy. And I know that's a solar in general is a mysterious subject for a lot of people. You hear solar, the, the, the black curtain comes down and you think, huh? And I understand that. It did for me too. Uh, I put my first solar panel on a van in 2010. And so it's been a, a while since then. And in 2010, they were still kind of in their infancy. People weren't just buying solar and putting it on rigs. People weren't just living in rigs either. So I know it's mysterious. The first decision you have to make is how much solar do I need? So that's what we're going to talk about today. When we're done today, I hope you'll understand uh, how to make that decision for yourself. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how much money you have. I mean, if you might want 10,000 watts, but if you don't have any mo enough money, you can't have 10,000 watts. So look into the prices and find out, can I afford that? This is an entire 200 watt system for $400. And so you know, the first question is how much can you afford? Can you afford $400? And if you can afford $400, you can buy and build this system. And odds are really good, the prices will keep coming down. And so by the time you're watching this, maybe they're even less. But let's say you don't even have $400. You want solar, but you can't, you can't even afford $400. Are you out of luck? Well, surprisingly, no. You're going to have to really scale down your idea of what power you have. Say you have 200 bucks. Uh, I have got a video. And you, I'm not going to repeat it all. I, I always do that, and I'm not going to do that. Go to this video. You can use USB devices, a USB power bank that's charged by a solar panel. So you do have power. And USB devices are so universal now. They do so much for us. So even if you don't even have enough money to buy a system like this, the $400, you have $200. Well, if you only have $100, you can buy a battery bank and just charge it as you drive. That's $100 for an electrical system. Then if you can afford the solar panel to charge the battery bank, then you have a solar system with USB only. And you can do a lot with USB. Okay, so the first question is, how much money do you have? And then if the answer is, I have, I have quite a bit of money. I can spend as much as I want to or need to. Well, then the answer becomes, buy all the solar you can afford. Okay, it's just that simple. I'm not going to tell you to do an energy audit. I'm not going to tell you to write down everything you're going to need. No, no, no. Buy all you can afford. Okay, if you've got $1,000 to, to spend on a system, Spend it, <laughs> okay? Now that brings us to the second question. How much solar can you mount on your roof or can you carry in your rig? If you're in a car, an SUV, or even a minivan, you can't mount much. More than just what you want, it's what can you mount. And if you put, syst put uh, portable systems inside the rig, uh, then it's how much can you fit inside the rig as you're traveling. So figure out how many solar panels you can carry out and how much, and then that's, and how many you can afford. And then that's going to be the size of your system. The big part of it is the battery. The batteries have become one of the most expensive parts of the system. Uh, if you go lithium, and I think it's worth it to go lithium, the lithium has gone down now to $300. You can buy $300, 100 amp hour, 1280 watt hour batteries for 300 bucks or less all day on Amazon. It's pretty amazing. That used to cost you a thousand or more. So it's really amazing how they've dropped. So now I just recommend lithium. Buy the lithium and, and you're gonna be really satisfied and happy. And if you get too, many, too much solar and not enough battery, then that's a waste too. You really need to balance your solar in, and your battery. In fact, my inclination would be to buy too much battery and, and then have too little solar. And I know a lot of people don't think that way, but battery storage. So first is how much can you afford? How much can you put on your roof or can you carry in your rig? And then the next one is what season are you going to be in? Or if you're only gonna travel in the summer, you, you don't need nearly as much as if you're gonna travel in the winter. And, and what's the weather? So a good way to summarize that is to say, size your system 
for the worst weather. What my general recommendation is, well, size up for the weather, and if you're going to the desert, which an awful lot of us are, size it for the worst day of the year. Sun's low on the horizon, it's cloudy. If it does that for three, four, five days in a row and you've got a single 100 amp hour battery, you're probably gonna run out. You running your fridge, you will run out because your fridge will eat that. No power coming in because it's crummy weather and it's really low on the horizon and it's cloudy. You're gonna run out of solar power to your battery, you're not gonna be able to run your fridge. Do you wanna throw all your food away? That's what'll happen. And I know people that's happened to them too. Even in the summer, you got to plan for the worst weather. Uh, a lot of Arizona in particular gets a monsoon season. And in the monsoon season, I've been in Flagstaff, Arizona, which has good sun. I, we, it rained every day for 16 days straight. There was a big group of us there in the forest and every single one of us ran out of solar. You can't size for 16 days of bad weather, but you can size for four or five. You do that by building a bigger battery bank. The more storage you have in your batteries, if on the last sunny day you got your battery bank built, that will coast you through. The battery bank is crucial in the bad weather. So uh, for most people, 400 watts of solar and 200 amp hour lithium batteries is just fine. That's going to work really well. The, the power there is two to one. If your power is two to one, you're good. So that's three. the first three things you do is you how much money can you afford, how much space do you have, and what's planning for the worst weather. So now let me give you broad generalizations. Um, for most people, 200 watts, what I have here is the minimum. Uh, if you're living in a van, this is kind of the minimum what you need. 200 watts, 100 amp hour lithium battery. Now that's gonna be fantastic in the summer. It will be marginal in the winter. And also, like in the example I gave of 16 days without any sun, you'll fail. Overdo it. Spend all the money you can, all the roof space you have. So I think 300 is a much better. That will, that will allow you to run two batteries and keep them at 100% state of charge and, and going uh, all the time. Even better is 400 watts and two lithiums because you've got a good storage system and you've got a good amount of power coming in on the few sunny days you get out of the winter or in the long stretch of bad storms. So another factor in, in planning for your worst weather, think back to the example I gave, we had 16 days of solid rain. Well, it didn't rain the whole 12 hours of daylight. We'd get an occasional break in the clouds and all of a sudden you'd look up and uh, it would be bright sunny day. Maybe you'd get an hour of bright sun. Maybe you get two hours. If you only have 200 watts of solar, you can only put in a little bit in that two hour window that you have. If you have 400 watts of solar and you got a one hour break all day, you're gonna get double what you would get with two. Maybe that's enough to get you through another day on your battery. So I think those are the key factors in, fact, in sizing your system. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you to do an energy audit. You have to know the duty cycle when you're doing your energy audit. Most of us don't, we're just guessing. You're gonna take your item, you're gonna find out how much, watt, how much wattage it draws, how many amps it draws. You're gonna find out the duty cycle. Will it run half the time? Will it run only two hours a day? You multiply the watts per hour or the amps per hour by the hours it's going to run and that's the amount of power you have to produce out of your battery to get that. Again, I'm not concerned about the energy audit. I'm concerned that you buy the most you possibly can that fits your budget, fits your space. And then you plan on, and then when you do your energy audit, you do it for the worst day of the weather, the worst stretch of days. Now, as a final thought, let me give you my personal uh, thoughts of a minimum of what you need. So here's the ideal, you're in a van. 400 watts, uh, wherever you're carrying it, and two, uh, two lithiums. That's pretty much ideal. That'll get you through the worst weather you're probably going to be in. The next is uh, 300 watts and two batteries. That's gonna put a little bit of strain on the battery. It's not exactly two to one, which is what I recommend, but it's close enough. I think I would still have 300 watts and two batteries. And then the absolute minimum, I think for anyone to run a fridge is 200 watts and 100 amp, 100 amp hour lithium. That's about what I consider to be the minimum. Minimum to good enough. Well, that's, you got a good system. Well-sized, good system. Now let's say you're in an RV. 
RVs burn a lot more power. They have phantom draws going on all over the place. They've got little things that are connected that you don't even know about, and they have a constant draw. The absolute minimum for an RV, in my personal opinion, unless you've stripped it out of all the system uh, and you've re rejiggered it and you don't have Harleen draws, the minimum system uh, is 500 watts. Don't even think about uh, an RV with less than 500 watts. That's my personal opinion. Now, I know people who do less. They're just really energy conservant, like we talked about. They, they burn a minimal amount of energy. But an adequate, barely adequate amount is 500. 700, 750 is far better. 1,000 is where you want to be. If you're in an RV, you want to be at 1,000 watts. Now, let's look at another minimum system. Let's look at you want to run just a fridge, a 12-volt compressor fridge. You need 200 watts as a minimum in a single battery. Let's look at the next step up. You want to run your 12-volt fridge, and you want to run a microwave. The absolute minimum, and I mean rock bottom, is 200 and 100. And that's really rock bottom. You really absolutely have to have, in fact, I think I would go so far as to say at that point, you're probably damaging your battery. It's slow, but steady. You're going to damage your battery with 200 watts of solar and 100 watts of lithium to run both the fridge and a microwave. And the reason is because you're not going to keep your battery at 100% state of charge. So while that's the minimum, it's not what I would recommend. And I know you can do it. I've done it. But with 300 watts, then you're easily, pretty comfortably, going to take care of your battery and run your 12-volt 12, uh, 12 fridge and your microwave at the same time. 400 is ideal. you got plenty of battery. Size your system for the worst weather. But realize that if you will tilt that system at about 45, uh, man, you'll get about a third more power. It's, it's 20, 30%. It's really a big amount. If you swivel it, and you're going to swivel it by going out there and picking it up and changing it. Uh, if you swivel it through the day, you can also get another 10% or so. So I know I, I've hammered you with so much information, but it's really, really important. Size your system to your budget. Size your system to the amount of space you have. Size your system to the very worst possible weather and conditions of mounting the panels. And then do an energy audit and buy the most solar you can. <laughs> That's why, you know, people ask me how much solar I to buy. I say buy all you can afford. That's always my answer because you don't have to hear all of this stuff. Buy all you can afford and plan on getting more if you can plan to size it so you can get more if you can. So that's that's my bottom line. But it, sometimes it really helps us to know all the details so that we can make better and more informed decisions. And I hope I hope I said this in a way that you understood. All right, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.